I guess one of the things that we're most excited about is the opportunity to make money from the tailwind of infrastructure construction in Australia. So if you think about the amount of road and rail projects that are on the cards over the next few years, it's, it's absolutely massive, the increase that you're going to see. Um, to give you some numbers, historically over the last 10 years, the average amount of spending from governments on infrastructure projects has been around $6 billion a year. Um, over the next three years, that's going to go from $6 billion to $16 billion. So it's going to more than double in a very short time frame. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase demand for construction materials. Uh, companies like Borel and Adelaide Brighton, we think, are extremely well positioned to benefit from the volume increases and also the price increases you're likely to see. Um, it's the first time in basically a decade that you're going to have a tight market for construction materials. And what I think people are underestimating is the price increase that are likely to come through, not just the volumes. Yeah, I think it was a really interesting um, speech from Joe Hockey uh, many years ago at the G20 where he talked about governments being basically tapped out for fiscal policy, monetary policy being almost tapped out as well, and essentially governments needed to use infrastructure spending as a way of creating productivity gains and also creating employment, which would be a big driver for economies going forward. Australia's actually led the way in terms of infrastructure spending, and you're starting to see that come through in America and Europe now, but Australia started back in 2014, and essentially that process, which is a multi-year process, almost you know, the next 10 years is mapped out, um, was really started back, back at that time. Yeah, essentially you get quite good visibility from looking at the BTRE data. So BTRE is like the government body that provides community with details about which road projects are coming, which rail projects are coming, what the size of them are, when they're likely to effectively hit, hit the ground, so to speak. And essentially we can see very good visibility out to 2020 and beyond, given the you know, second airport in Sydney and other things that are longer term, um, to give us a lot of confidence in that. These projects are funded, they've started, um, there's no risk of these projects not going ahead. Yeah, so a few years ago we invested in Leighton's, which is now called Simic. Um, that stock has tripled over the last three years. We, um, we bought that stock when it was a pretty hated um, stock back at $16. Um, they've enjoyed a huge tailwind of these projects starting up and they win about half the work in Australia for new road and rail projects. Um, we've recently sold that position. We've actually invested um, some of the proceeds in Borrell. Um, Borrell, we think, is a, is a late cycle beneficiary of this as the construction materials get used on road projects in Australia and Borrell have some of the most strategically located quarries on the east coast, which is where most of the new road projects are going on.